Welcome to another video. Today, there are quite a few important updates in AI, so let's go through them one by one. We'll start with Windsurf, then move on to Google's Gemini 3, and finally look at what's happening with OpenAI's open model. Let's begin with Windsurf. If you've been following the AI coding space, you've probably heard of Windsurf. In recent months, Windsurf attracted a lot of attention from major players. OpenAI was in talks to acquire Windsurf for around $3 billion. And there was even an exclusivity period where Windsurf wasn't allowed to talk to other buyers. However, that exclusivity expired, and the deal with OpenAI ultimately fell apart. Instead, Google stepped in with a different kind of offer. Rather than buying Windsurf outright, Google made a deal to hire some of its key people. Most notably, CEO Varun Mohan, co-founder Douglas Chen, and several members of the research and development team. Google is paying $2.4 billion, but it's not acquiring Windsurf or taking a stake in the company. Instead, Google is paying for a non-exclusive license to certain Windsurf technologies, which means Windsurf can still license its tech to other companies. This is a structure we've seen before, where big tech companies hire talent and license technology without going through a full acquisition, which can help them avoid regulatory scrutiny. As a result of the deal, Varun Mohan and Douglas Chen will join Google DeepMind, where they'll focus on agentic coding projects, especially related to the Gemini project. Jeff Wong, who was previously the head of business at Windsurf, is now the interim CEO, and Graham Marino is the new president. Most of Windsurf's team, about 250 employees, will stay at Windsurf and continue to work on its products for enterprise clients. This approach is similar to what Google did with Character.ai last year, and other companies like Microsoft and Amazon have made similar moves with Inflection and Adept, respectively. For Windsurf, this move brings both opportunities and challenges. On one hand, the company retains its independence and receives a significant influx of capital through the licensing fees. On the other hand, losing key leaders and researchers could make it harder for Windsurf to maintain its momentum. We've seen similar situations before, when Scale AI lost key people to Meta, or when Inflection pivoted after Microsoft hired away top talent. In both cases, the startups struggled to keep up their previous growth after the departures. Windsurf's technology has become especially popular among developers and non-developers for Vibe coding, using modern AI tools to write code more efficiently. This has led to rapid revenue growth for the company, with annual recurring revenue reportedly jumping from $40 million to $100 million in just a few months. The company's tools remain available for enterprise customers, and the majority of the team will continue to develop and support these products. According to Jeff Wang, the goal now is to maximize Windsurf's impact in the enterprise space. This whole episode highlights how intense the competition for AI talent and technology has become. Big tech companies are increasingly willing to make large payments to bring in top researchers and license the latest technology, rather than going through lengthy acquisition processes that might attract regulatory attention. It also shows that for startups in hot areas, like AI code generation, there are multiple ways to achieve liquidity and growth, not just through traditional acquisitions. Now, let's turn to Gemini 3. But before we do that, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.0 Flash, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, 
But what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and five videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. Google DeepMind has been working on the Gemini series of models for some time, and recently, references to Gemini 3.0, specifically Gemini 3.0 Flash and Gemini 3.0 Pro have been found in the code base of the Gemini CLI tool. These references suggest that a new generation of the Gemini model is on the way, following up on the current Gemini 2.5 Pro. There's also mention of a model called Kingfall, which has shown strong performance in early tests. It's not entirely clear whether Kingfall is an early version of Gemini 3 or a variant of Gemini 2.5 Pro with a new feature called DeepThink. The DeepThink capability has been rumored for a while and is expected to bring more advanced reasoning and chain of thought abilities, particularly for use cases on the web. This would fit with Google's broader strategy of making Gemini useful across Chrome, Workspace, and other platforms. The timing of these leaks is important. Several major competitors are preparing new model releases, XAI's Grok 4, OpenAI's anticipated GPT-5, and a rumored update to Claude from Anthropic. The appearance of Gemini 3 references just before these launches suggests that Google is aiming to keep pace with or even outdo its rivals, especially in areas like coding, advanced reasoning, and research. As of now, there's no official announcement from Google about the public release of Gemini 3. The details we have come from references in the open source code base and some leaks about internal testing. It's possible that both Gemini 3 and the DeepThink feature are still being evaluated and refined within DeepMind's research teams. If the performance seen in early testing holds up, Gemini 3 could represent a significant step forward especially for developers and researchers looking for more powerful AI tools. Finally, let's talk about OpenAI's open model. OpenAI had planned to release a new open model this summer, which was highly anticipated because it would allow developers to freely download and run the model locally rather than relying on cloud APIs. However, OpenAI has now delayed the release indefinitely citing the need for further safety testing. According to CEO Sam Altman, the company wants to take more time to run additional safety tests and review high-risk areas before making the model available to the public. This open model was expected to offer reasoning capabilities similar to OpenAI's O-series models, and the company had set a high bar for its release. In a statement, Aidan Clark OpenAI's VP of Research said that while the model's capabilities are strong, the company wants to make sure it meets their standards along every axis before releasing it. The delay means that developers will have to wait longer to try out the first open model OpenAI has released in years. The open model ecosystem has become more competitive recently. Recently, Chinese AI startup Moonshot AI released Kimi K2, a 1 trillion parameter open model that reportedly outperforms OpenAI's GPT 4.1 on several coding benchmarks. This adds more pressure on OpenAI to deliver a model that not only meets its safety and capability standards, but also stands out in a crowded field. There's also been some speculation about additional features for OpenAI's open model, such as the ability to connect to the company's cloud-hosted models for more complex queries. However, it's not clear if these features will be included in the final release. Meanwhile, 
the failed acquisition of Windsurf has reportedly been a point of tension between OpenAI and Microsoft, which is one of OpenAI's largest backers. Microsoft already has access to all of OpenAI's intellectual property, but OpenAI was reluctant to let Microsoft gain access to Windsurf's AI coding technology as well. With the Windsurf deal now off, and Google hiring away key Windsurf talent, OpenAI faces more competition in the AI coding space. To sum up, the past week has seen some significant developments in the AI industry. Windsurf's leadership and technology are heading to Google DeepMind. Gemini 3 references point to a major new model on the horizon, and OpenAI's open model release is delayed as the company focuses on safety. I was seeing these stuff and thought to share it with you guys as well. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.